Hey folks, Jen or Mark Griffin here with my overdue look at the Tesla variable power, variable voltage mod um, that I got from iVape.net, I believe. Oops, dropping things all over. Um, anyway, let's just go to the unboxing and uh, take a look at this interesting design device. So let's go ahead and unbox our Tesla. Nice presentation box, all the usual stuff. Variable power, doesn't say variable watch, and Tesla with its little T logo. And inside the box you have an instruction manual. The menu system is pretty simple, so it doesn't need a lot, and there's pretty much just enough in here to get you going. And then we have the mod itself. It comes in chrome and gunmetal. I'm tired of fingerprinty chrome, so I figured I'd give a gunmetal a try this time. And here is the Tesla. It does have the nice OLED screen, although it is pretty deep set or far from the surface. Uh, your plus and minus buttons, which also control all your menu entries, and the fire button. Although mine sometimes seems a little off-center, like it pushes more towards the top than the bottom, but that's, you know, nothing crazy. The Tesla logo on the bottom. There are vents in the bottom cap. There are also these long vents along the side. And as you can see, other than the top and the bottom cap, it's kind of triangular a rounded triangle and it has the uh, ribs which actually make it fairly easy to hold on to and the top cap which has the outside ego threads and uh, let's go ahead and pop in our 18650 and I do find that this one works fine with flat top buttons as you can see the vent holes that are also in the bottom cap. So it does work fine with flat top batteries in addition to button top. And you know me, I like orange, so I like seeing my orange battery through the sides. Although if that battery ever vents, because those slots are where your hands are, you're gonna drop it like a hot potato. And I think one of the most exciting <laughs> innovations um, well, it isn't that, although there are little air slots here, so if your tank fits tight, you won't have a problem getting airflow to it, which is nice. But that center pin is spring loaded, so it adjusts. So, whenever you won't ever have a problem with this mod that I do with my silver bullet sometimes, and that you know, the center post on your cartomizer or whatever gets pushed up and it won't, you know, come down low enough to fire anymore. Uh, five button click on and off. So let's turn it on and you get the Tesla and you get a scrolling system on and it'll do the reverse system off when you turn it off. And the only kind of annoying thing here and then it will show the wattage when you fire or whatever you have it set to. The only thing here is that the buttons are above the screen. So you kind of have to, you know, move your hand in an odd way to hit the button. If you hold down the right one, you get the resistance, and of course I don't have anything on it right now, so it's just showing 9.9. .9. Let's go ahead and get something on there so we can actually see what the uh, correct ohmage is. And we'll just give it a cardo tank and try that again. 1.6 ohms. Now if you hold the minus button, you will get the remaining voltage on your battery. Fairly fresh. Now, if you hold down both buttons, you can lock it or unlock it. But it has an on and an off function, so I really don't use the lock very often. Five button click and you get system off. So now it is pocket safe, the same way it would be with lock or unlock. So, eh. 
and then system on again. And to get in the menu, you hold down that plus button past. Let me get it right. And so wattage up and down is by 0.5 up to 15 and then back to 3. And down the same way. And if you hold that positive button down, like for about eight seconds, long past when you get the add my resistance, you will get the menu. So you can switch between power and voltage with the minus. So let's put it on voltage. And now the voltage goes up and down in 0.1 increments. And it'll roll from six to three and back again. Go back into our menu. Oop, lost it. Hold. LCD display, or you can turn the LCD on and off completely. The LCD C display lets you choose between showing the voltage, showing the resistance, or showing the battery remaining voltage. I'm just going to leave it on voltage so it'll show what voltage or wattage it's firing at when I fire the device. And that is pretty much the extent of the menuing system, which is pretty much all you need. I'm going to switch it back into variable wattage mode. And that is the Tesla. Let me drop it down so I don't explode my cardo. And we're ready to vape. Now, Sizey, it is big. I think it's bigger than it needs to be. I mean, it's pretty much as wide as a silver bullet. Its walls are very thick. Um, it is longer than a VAMO in full mode. It is quite a bit thicker than, say, a Provari or a Sigeli ZMAX or VMAX. Um, the walls are very, very thick. They are, however, aluminum and not stainless steel, so it's actually really light for its size. So that's my close-up on the Tesla. Um, I've been using it pretty much completely since um, I got it. It, uh, for me, hits a little better than some of the other uh, variable wattage, variable power devices that have been coming out. I kind of wish it was a little smaller, um, as I said in there, showing it, you know, comparing it to some other devices. It's uh, it's pretty darn long. Um, it's also really, really thick. Um, I'm not sure why they went with such a thick wall on the aluminum, um, but it makes the device fairly uh, hefty, wide, although ribbed for all those that's what she said jokes. Um, it, it is fairly comfortable in the hand to hold. Turned it off by accident. That won't help really much. It hits fairly nicely. At whatever wattage I have it set at, it seems to hit nicer at that wattage than pretty much anything but the VAMO. Um, I kind of find that even with the new 1.2 beta on the EVIC, this hits better. Um, not quite as good as VAMO at the same setting. I mean, these are similar cardamizers, and I have the VAMO set to uh, 7 watts. That is a satisfying cloudy vape. 
Um, I have this puppy set to 10 watts. Same kind of carbonizer, same kind of tank, 11 watts. An okay hit. It seems like it's not getting quite as much power as the Vamo. Now, this one does not let you choose between RMS and average for your wattage settings. Um, however, it does perform really well. So I have to say that with the Vamo, it's probably my favorite performing of the uh, new variable voltage variable power devices that we have come out. The styling is unique. Again, I said I don't take it out a lot with me because it's just huge. Um, but I've been dragging it everywhere with me around the house. Um, the menu design is really simple. Um, I may not like that the buttons are on top of the screen, but that hasn't been a big deal. Um, I really like the floating center pin. That basically means, you know, I've had off and on problems with the silver bullet, which is pretty much, you know, the mainstay of the vaping community. You know, the solid, you can't kill it mod. Um, but I have had to send it back for having that center pin get pushed in too far. And I do have some devices that just will not fire on it because their pin, you know, you get to the point where you have to tape a sharp device and start pulling the center pin out of your devices to get them to go ahead and make a solid contact with the uh, positive post inside the mod. And the fact that this has that little spring-loaded center pin, I think, is a really innovative and great design. And um, I actually hope we start seeing that on some other mods. Um, but it is nicely manufactured. It is not a fingerprint magnet um, in the gunmetal, anyway. Um, it's While it is fairly thick, um, that triangular shape that you get um, in the grippy part is act actually makes it more comfortable than it might appear. And even though it's large, it's really much lighter than you think it's gonna be. Um, I believe it's made of aluminum. Um, and even though it's really, really thick, it's really light. And they went through the extra step of, um, on that connector, it actually has the outside um, threading for an Ego. Um, now I haven't had a whole lot of uh, luck with the Kangers. Um, which, you know, pretty much only work on Ego tubes for me because they only have that outside. They don't quite fit in the drip well to get them in there, which is sad because if they just went in, um, they would actually make that connection and that would be great. Um, they will, however, work with, you know, most of your other Ego type mods and totally hide that bottom skirt which sort of makes them look a little cool. Um, so those were great. I wish I could get the Kangers in there because I hate the fact that I can pretty much only run those Kangers on an actual Ego battery because most of the devices, even if they have room for the, the uh, Ego connection, um, they don't have the outside threads for a device that doesn't have the inside 510 threads. So if they went in there, that would be awesome. I think that would be a fairly simple change to make on this. But anyway, um, of the recent uh, variable wattage devices that have been coming out, um, this is probably um, in my top two or three. So um, that's a look at the very interestingly designed Tesla. Um, has a few designs I'm not entirely fond of. The buttons on the top make it hard to read the display. The display, however, is very nice. The menu system, very simple and easy to use, not eight or nine items you have to flip through. There's like three. And that's pretty much all you need. You need to switch it between voltage and power once, maybe. I pretty much leave it on power. Um, you may want to change the display, but probably not. If you like seeing what it's firing at, that's pretty much where you're going to keep it. And you have really easy access to the uh, resistance check on the atomizer and the battery check. Um, and, and frankly, those are the ones you're going to look at the most often anyway. Other than that, it fires every time. I haven't had any problem with devices that don't fire on it um, because of that center pin. And it just works. It's a little more expensive than the Vamo, but 
not as expensive as the Evic. Um, it falls right in that, you know, $79, $80 range. And uh, it's a pretty nice device. Give it a spin if you're so inclined. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.